Good morning, good evening, good even good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It's always my pleasure to be with my two very good colleagues, Mohammed Chokri and Phoebe Francis. How are you, gentlemen? Let me ask you first, Phoebe. You well? Very, very well and a beautiful day here in, in Dubai. Ah. Nice to meet all of you. It's always a beautiful day, Dubai. Mohammed, how are you? Hi, Graham. Hi, Phoebe uh, from Bahrain. It's a wonderful day and it's wonderful to be with you always. Well, thank you. Why, isn't it interesting, why do you say that? Just it might, People might think that's an interesting or an odd question at this point, but why would you say that? You know, after some time of uh, initiating this channel and having uh, discussed so many um, common topics that we are of interest of for us, I mean, we kind of having uh, that special uh, friendship, which we already had before, but this very platform even strengthened this relationship, you know? So you've used the word that's really important for today. And I didn't prompt you on the question. I didn't give you any notice of that question. But you no, used didn't. that we're a very important word uh, because today I suggested that, that we talk about leadership and the power of relationships. Hmm. So that's why that's what I said. So what is it about? Well, we we have a relationship. We have a relationship. Yeah. I and the, that relationship in, in both cases with you, both gentlemen of you, goes back quite some years. I, my relationship with Muhammad goes back further than my relationship with Phoebe, but uh, even so, both we have a really good relationship. So today, in the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about relationships in terms of leaderships. Phoebe, you were going to say... Yeah, I was trying to say, you know, over a period of time, we started interacting and we developed a, a knowledge about each other, which is building up that connection. So I feel, you know, the connection before content, which help us uh, to know each other's strengths, know each other's areas of expertise. And then we, we, we perish for this time together, for this conversation, even yeah. though we interact in a virtual world so that that connection build as we know the people who with we interact on a daily basis yeah the the word relationship is is we use it often but we we don't really explore too much about what that word can mean right so obviously today in in the focusing on the importance of leadership and relationship well, let's just talk firstly about the sort of relationships that we, that we can have. You know, we can have a relationship with the person in the checkout counter. If we're the same person we're checking out, we can say, hi, how are you today? And we can smile. And this is a relationship, right? It's not very deep. We're not going to be sharing too much about what we're going to do with the items we just bought at the supermarket, necessarily. But we have a relationship. If we have a relationship with someone who we just wave to, and that might be it, but it's still a relationship, isn't it? Then, Absolutely, yes. Then we have relationships which go for years. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether any of you have had been blessed to have relationships in two cases that I'm thinking of, but I have known these people for many years, and I don't often see them. But when, I, when we do see each other, and years can pass, but when we see each other, it's as if it's only been a few days. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So what happens that we have this connection? Beautiful. I want, uh, uh, since we grabbed and started this talk, Maybe it's good to uh, distinguish between a relationship and a rapport because no. yeah. uh, both of them are uh, a level of relationship, okay? Yes. But as you mentioned, the cashier, and I want also to give the example of uh, an audience or uh, a class or, or a training workshop. Of course, we build a relationship in the beginning, but that's we, we call that building a rapport. Uh, and then you can base uh, on that repo the learning and uh, and teaching because 
you can never start any business, let me say, before building that relationship. But relationships are stronger than rapport that they go beyond that instance, beyond that occasion. People will really uh, ask about you. You will have, you know, that kind of relationship. But a rapport is short. So maybe it's good to make that difference at the beginning. Absolutely. Rapport is the start of the relationship. It's the start. And we can get rapport by smiling at someone and they smile back. That's the start of rapport. I remember once, maybe it's happened more than once in a workshop when I talk about rapport and say, what is it? And someone will say, oh, it's when you have trust with someone. No, you haven't got trust when you've got rapport. That's just the start of it. But when you have a relationship, that's when it's, got, when it's developed even more, right? What sort of things can happen when you have a deeper relationship than just rapport, a relationship that you that happens over a period of time, perhaps. What can happen? Yeah, I think uh, one aspect which I feel, uh, which you mentioned, uh, when when that relationship uh, develops, it uh, it leads to better trust between the people whom we, we interact on a regular basis. So, for example, I, I <laughs> the relationship word brought me back to a, a few years back when I met one of my friend even though we are not uh, seeing each other for a long period of time. But, uh, you know, that trust remains where we can interact and share information and get information. And, and uh, you, you know, there is, there is no uh, barriers which prevent us. And especially in workplace, that is another uh, senior leader whom I remember, you know, who, who, who have developed a relationship which help us to speak our mind. You know what is in within us, and it led to a couple of interesting initiatives. So you know, uh, the value of trust is what what comes to the forefront when that word relationship is uh, shared by you, Graham. So a quick thought from my side. So w- let's now focus a little bit more on the leadership and the workplace um, environment where we have a relationship. And clearly in the workplace, you can have a relationship with someone who works in another department, but that relationship eh, is not not, not necessarily a lot of trust. It's not that depth of relationship. Why is it important? Because we're talking about leadership. Why is it important that leaders develop relationships? In fact, we say in the Leadership Challenge, leadership is a relationship. So why is it important? Yes, Muhammad's used the word trust, and we know that trust is critical for leaders. We've talked about this before. But why else is is a relationship important for leaders? Muhammad? Uh, I know we are talking about workplace, but I think always parenthood comes to the forefront, and it is not separated from workplace. Let me give a quick example. Um, one of my five children, at one stage in their young times, um, we had some issues, okay? And I needed to bring his attention to being more atten- attentive to his uh, study, blah, blah, blah. So uh, here's one thing that uh, my wife brought my attention to. She said, you see, Muhammad, our son, uh, you don't have that strong relationship as you have with our four others, Okay. He, he, that's the weakest relationship. And now suddenly you want to come out of nowhere and tell him, do this, don't that. You want to go to business. First, you need to build the relationship. Similarly, at workplace, we are demanding and we are encouraging or we are uh, empowering our uh, constituents or co-workers, but without relationship, suddenly uh, asking them to do this and that. How, how What would be the quality of the work that they will give? So that's the importance in my opinion. You you were kind of hesitant, I think, at the start of telling that story, of introducing the parenting role and how that story (laughs) occurred. But absolutely what you were talking about, what you described in terms of the relationship, the trust, and what your wife said to you about the relationship that you have with the other children but not with this, what what was happening in my mind? 
my, what was happening in my mind as you're telling that story is this is a workplace situation could be exactly the same, couldn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Change Absolutely. that a little bit and say you want to you have a great relationship with four members of your team, but with a with a th fifth person, eh, it's not so good. And then you start start to say to that team member, "This is what I want," and one of your colleagues says, "Hey, hang on," <laughs> exactly as your wife did, right? Mm. Now maybe I'm being simplistic in me making this this comparison, but it's not simplistic. We have a relationship with our wife, our children. We get things done with our children through the relationship that we have. And as leaders, it's the same. It's just that the physical environment that we're in is the workplace. Phoebe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this reminds me, you know. So when, 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 so we, we see that relationship lead to influence. Yeah. Yes. And and this influence is what get things done or jobs get done. But influence is also tied up with getting things is also tied with trust, which you talked about before, right? So there's yes, that, yes. Oh, but absolutely influence. Yes, and that's what. Gets and, and 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 I remember, you know, uh, as as an entrepreneur, I, I I reached out to a friend of mine um, who is uh, working in Bahrain in an organization in a um, financial institution. So, it was related to um, a, a specific project, and what you know that relationship which we had when we worked together led to that conversation when I just informed I'm on my entrepreneurial journey. So that the relationship leads to trust, trust leads to getting things done. It's, Absolutely. It is, sorry, Mohammed, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and uh, in addition to influence also, uh, it is very important that the leader gives the relationship not to influence. I know the eventual uh, goal is to influence, but you're not building the relationship so that you're waiting for the moment to achieve your purposes behind the relationship. No, the relationship is not just a means. It is a goal because by strengthening the relationship uh, with your uh, colleagues, guess what? Magic happens. Absolutely. And and also the strong part of influence it, it, it can come out of this relationship. Look, I'm not giving any secrets away when I share this with you now because I've talked about it often. As a father, and I'm not criticising other fathers. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. So don't anybody get me wrong. I'm just an example of how I influence and the relationship. I never said to my children, particularly as when they were teenagers, and certainly beyond that. There are certain words or phrases that I never said. These phrases include, you should do this, or you must do this. I never told my children what to do. Never. I influenced them. And I, I had that fed back to me some years ago when I said to my eldest daughter about a particular situation I was going to go through with her, I said, you know, I never tell you what to do. And her immediate response was, yeah, she didn't have to think about it. Now, I believe as a father and also as a leader that the power comes from the word that Phoebe just used five minutes ago, which was influence. So I influence my children. And, I, you know, I use phrases like, can I suggest? And I don't just use that with my children, but I use that with other people as well. So this influence is really important. But back a step, we're not going to be able to influence if we don't have the relationship right so the relationship is is like the starting point oh no sorry rapport is the starting point <laughs> and then we move to relationship so what does a manager do a manager will say don't bring your problems to work don't talk about your personal issues that's what managers will say right mm -hmm. what will leaders <laughs> do I, I, I think, Graham, uh, you know, um, the, 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 these are some misconceptions which is going around within uh, many of the new uh, members within the organization. Quite often, uh, there was a research which, uh, which came out that uh, first leadership related training is received after 10 years of someone is becoming a manager. It's more. So there is a, 
It's more than 10. Yeah. 42 in the US is the average age that leadership training starts. Yeah. So I think what, what happens is uh, when, as, as you mentioned, don't, 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 don't come with your problems. <laughs> Actually, yeah. these problems shouldn't be known by uh, the people. And that is only leading to a solution. Sometimes it is because of my hierarchical position. I don't know what to do. I need a guidance. Sometimes I don't have the uh, authority given by my organization so that I come to my superior to get uh, the information being shared. So as, as you pointed out, if, if there is no relationship built, people will not come to you with, with these challenges. What, what and you, you as an organization, you as a leader is missing the opportunity to address that so that it may help your clients. It may solve a, a, a burning challenge which you are sure. facing. Sure. Isn't what goes through my mind when you mention the word clients it, is that for years, people at more senior levels <clears throat> would interact with, take to lunch, have events with their clients why? Because they're building a relationship with them, but they don't always do this with the people who are who they are managing and who they should be leading. So the, the relationship aspect, one of the other points that you mentioned, Phoebe, was about problems at home. And this is where it gets to emotional intelligence and how a leader should be able to recognise because of the behaviours of the individual that this person's got some issues, so I'll go and say, hey, Ali, how are things going? And Ali can say, um, I've got some problems, but I'll be okay. All right. Well, if you want to talk about it, I'm here, right? That's the briefly the sort of conversation that should happen if there's, if there's an issue. But let's just go back a little bit and t talk for a moment about how do we establish relationships? How do we establish them? Yep, start with report. Then what? Talk me through this. I think... Uh... Um, I learned from my leader at work is that uh, he found um, reasons and he found uh, excuses to open conversations with me and showing interest not only in the work I do but in who I am and what I look for and what I uh, are ambitious about, interested about, okay? And even goes beyond and talks about my family and, you know, never misses an uh, occasion or uh, a, a, an opportunity to share with me that he, and share and show how much he is interested in me. That was enough for me. And uh, then... You know, it, I was like, your wish is my command. And he never commands, by the way. But yeah, 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 yeah. I was rushing to, yeah. So yeah. showing interest is a big one for me. Let me give you a, a hypothetical example, but it, it, it shouldn't be, I mean, it shouldn't be hypothetical. Let's just say that a leader manager has two levels below in the team, right? There's, there's team members and then there's a little bit further down. And the leader manager, because of the relationship he's building with everybody, may well become aware that the son or daughter of one of the team members at a that he doesn't see very often, perhaps because of the relationship in the workplace, physical relationship, but he hears that there's an issue or a problem. Uh, now, this or issue, it could be that his son is is doing his final exams at school. It could be that his son hasn't been well. It could be something like this. What's then going to happen if that leader goes to that person and says, I've got to ask you a question. How's your son? I know he hasn't been well. Mm. Oh. And if the leader has found out not directly from that person but has found out about it and he then goes to that person and says, just want to see how you're doing. How's your son? What does it do to the relationship? The leader caring about my son, right? Yeah, yeah. So forget the old idea of leave your problems at home. When you make this sort of connection with the people you're leading, mm. they love being there, don't they, because of the relationship that exists. And it's such a simple act. It's a small act takes seconds, seconds of sincerity, though, 
Yep. And yet it lasts perhaps forever. It touches the heart. It touches the heart. And there can be little things that people remember, like um, you know, the son, I said, the one example of the son having school exams, and a little bit after that, so how did your son go with the exams? Or how's he doing? That sort of connection is part of building up the relationship with the people you're working with. Yeah? Bibi? Yeah, I, 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 I remember uh, an incident in which uh, uh, one of my line managers, uh, who every, every day he just come and meet all the seven direct reports he have. And it is just checking in, like, is everything okay? <laughs> is there something which you need my help? So mm-hmm. these these words and and sometimes when there are uh, things to be addressed, uh, Phoebe give half to me. Let me let me do that. And these simple acts make us comfortable to interact, and he, he ensures that people are living on time, people are uh, not sitting late, people are given the feedback. This is what I'm I'm looking for. So these kind of simple acts make us comfortable in that environment and. He he's someone whom we often still now interact with as a good friend rather than a previous uh, former co- co-worker or a boss. You know, so that that's relationship uh, example which is uh, which I want to share. It is simple acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with, with with attention and focus with the other individual. When you mentioned that he came to you on a regular basis to see how you are, it immediately reminded me of a situation early in the pandemic. <laughs> Goodbye, it's gone. Thank you very much. But in the early stages when I'm helping uh, leaders keep that connection with people who were working from home, and in those early days of the of the pandemic, there was confusion, there was stress, there was anxiety about, oh, my gosh, I've got to do this. There was uncertainty. And I said, yes, you must have a weekly connection with your team, but I want you to make sure that you have a weekly connection with individually with everybody on the team just to say hi i'm just doing the zoom call just to make sure you're doing okay is everything happening the right way how can i help you right Mm -hmm. this is what leaders should be doing that was a direct example of the pandemic but this happens anyway right yeah what how are you how are you going going to perform muhammad if, if you know that you have a relationship with your leader that is solid, that has trust, you know that he cares. How how is it how's your performance going to be? Well, uh, it's unimaginable how far you can go in in serving that leader or um working with him the and w- with one point, with a desire, uh, with commitment, uh, willingly, not forcingly. And you can tell me that it's going to be the same job. It's going to be the same task, whether you like it or you don't like it. But guess what? When you do something and you like it, it's far more better for you, for the well-being of the team, yourself and your organization. So, And that is done only by building a relationship at, in the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you say this, though, there's one possible resistance going through that some people might have going through my mind now when people think oh if you've got a relationship with you all your your team members and you need to have a difficult conversation with the team member who is not performing well how can you do this if you uh, have a really good relationship with that person such as they have become like a friend so don't do it. Don't do this because if you, that you, they will take advantage of the friendship to be able to get away with poor performance. So what do I say about that? So let me, let me just say this. If we haven't yet, but if one of us has an issue with the other, we are able to talk about it, correct? Yes, yeah. of course, yeah. Yes, of course. So if I have a a team member who is becoming a little um, running his own race, shall we say, or not doing things that are fitting in with everybody else, of course I can have with him what I call not a difficult conversation but a comfortable conversation. Why? I, I push back on this 
this term difficult conversations uh, and I say, let's have a comfortable conversation with someone. And out of this, we get them to improve their behaviours. So let me just take this example, then I'm going to get your feedback. So let's just say that I need to address an issue that Muhammad has. He's not performing well. Of course, he always is doing brilliantly well. But I have an issue in this case. So I say, Muhammad, how are you doing? You're going to say, yeah, pretty good. Muhammad, we've got a few, can we have a few minutes to talk? I've got something that I really need to talk to you about. Are you okay with that? Yes, Muhammad will say, sure. Yeah. Muhammad, I've noticed a couple of things happen that are happening that are not quite the way they should be happening. So can I make a suggestion? And if I, we talk about this, you know that I've got your best interests at heart, but also the interest of our objectives. You, you agree with that? Yeah, okay, good. So, Muhammad, there's three, three things that I'd like you to think about and take action on. We need to change this. I need to see that you're doing this, and I'd like this to happen as well. So how do you feel about that, Mohammed? Yeah. Absolutely. It's very, yeah, it's very I can, appealing. I can, I can do that, sure. And then I'll say, Mohammed, is it okay if I notice that it's not happening, that we have another conversation about this? Deal, deal. Deal, <laughs> right? Now, I've obviously simplified it. But because we've got the relationship and the trust, I, I'm not going to be having what they call a difficult conversation that I don't feel comfortable in having and the person receiving it doesn't feel comfortable receiving it either, right? The, the basis of all of this is the relationship. Gentlemen, let me hear yeah. your comments. Phoebe, I know you've got so much to share. Go, go. And then Muhammad's got his hand up. Come on, come on, Phoebe. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, I like the comfortable conversation as yeah. a space. And in this process, what what uh, what you are trying to convey is what what good work look for you, and it is making clear, yeah. and there is clarity brought in, and, and the other person know this is what uh, my line manager or my leader is looking for at this point of time, and and it is very transparent communication work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, things are. Uh, crystal clear to the other person, which makes it wow. By the way, this can happen in in relationships between brothers, between you know father and son, between husband and wife. Um, so it can happen in the workplace when it's with someone we are really good friends with, and we are focused yeah. on the end results. That's that's important. So I, as I say, I, I push back on the term and the book that was written by Harvard professor or whatever, um, and people still talk about the importance of difficult conversations. Um, managers don't like that. Some of them do because they're quite happy to play strong man. But, you know, it's not the best way to get results. Yeah. Ahmed, you were going to say something, and I think I went well, to you. You pulled it right out of, out of my mouth, uh, which is uh, I would like us to give a, a rule. So... We know that we can give so many examples and ideas, but we can give a rule of thumb to as to how to build a relationship, all right? So you said it there, Graham, and I want to give an example um, before I reiterate it, which is um, I was working with a, a, a client, um, a training institute, and I came to know that one of the staff did a really good job with her first training uh, in-house training ever so it took her years to start that i was on my way to the institute and i stopped by coffee oh and i bought some pastries for my children when i go back and then i thought of her i said yeah she did just did a good job why don't i buy her a special small uh decorated cupcake all right i did that in a special box i went there before i start business with the team i said here this is for you I heard you did a fantastic job last time. And I didn't know that that cake, although it was consumed the same day, but the idea and the feeling was there forever because she texted me and she told me how she, she is happy, et cetera, et cetera. I wouldn't, the, what, so what's the rule? What would you do for your siblings, your brothers, your children? Do it also for your uh, co-workers. 
there is no red line in that regard. That is why we call my cousin, I have a relationship. My son, I have a relationship. That's the, that's the definition, as simple as that. Yes. Yes, the relationships are critical. As leaders, we must build relationships if we want to get great results. The last comment from Phoebe. Yeah, I, I, I just this this moment uh, brought another incident which uh, which happened in my one of my workplace. You know, uh, every week on uh, Thursday uh, because initially Thursday uh, Friday was initially holiday for us. So Thursday we have a, a tea break at around three o'clock. And what happens in this process is uh, when a, a staff members gathers, people can thank the other person in the room who have done something unique to the team or whatever it is. So that started creating and acknowledging simple acts. Thank you. Thank you. Encouraging. Um, encouraging for doing this. this has a positive impact on what we are doing. Your help was highly appreciated. And, and and you know it 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 started conversation between people which was otherwise initially not happening so yeah, yeah so you know, that, that relationship building is a conversation the, the key to what you just is what you just said those last two sentences it started conversations with people in the group it did yeah. not happen before right that's yeah. really really important and look just to sum this up we in pushing the point about leaders and the relationships that they build when you build relationships with the people you're leading people will then want to climb the mountain with you a lot more than if you don't have a relationship which brings me to the topic of our conversation that we're going to have next week in terms of climbing the mountain so the leaders have visions don't they leaders know where we're going or they should know where we're going and the second practice of the leadership challenge is inspire a shared vision so gentlemen let us talk next week about the power and the importance of having a vision as a leader are we okay on that absolutely yeah. can, can you forward. already see that conversation that we are having <laughs> <laughs> you can see the three of us here and we're envisioning the future one week from now when we're talking about having a vision. Gentlemen, I wish you a great week ahead. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I hope that people have learned from what we're talking about. I encourage people who are watching this now to please subscribe. There'll be other things made available to you when you subscribe. But also, if you've got any questions, You've got the email address on the, the, the page there in, in uh, YouTube. Send us your questions or your comments, please, and we'll be happy to discuss or even to comment by, back by email. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a great week ahead, as I said, and I look forward to being with you again next week at this time. See you. Thank you. See you all. <laughs>